conclusion that, that what anybody does, they do it for malicious reasons. Well, that may not be the case at all. Sometimes people make honest mistakes. I know you've made honest mistakes before. And when you've made an honest mistake, you expect others to give you the benefit of the doubt and not to assign to you motives that you never had in the first place. Well, if that's the way you want to be treated, then you treat other people that way. Don't assign people false motives. Don't jump to conclusions about why people do what they do. Love believes all things. Love thinks the best of others until evidence uh, is given that proves otherwise. What about um, uh, showing interest in other people's uh, activities, things that they like to do? If I want others to show interest in things that are important to me, then I need to be willing to show interest in things that are important to others. This is especially true in, in our marriage relationships. You know, that's one of the things that sometimes uh, plagues modern marriages is husbands get upset when their wives aren't interested in the things that they're interested in. And wives get upset when the husbands are not interested in the things that they're interested in. Just practice the golden rule and we could eliminate some of those problems. If you want somebody else to be interested in things that are important to you, then you show yourself to be interested in things important to them. And if both husband and wife do that, then proper interest will be shown in each other's lives and that problem and issue can be avoided. Here's another. If I want to be corrected with love and compassion and patience, then I should correct others in the same way. We all make mistakes from time to time and uh, sometimes others will bring those mistakes to our attention. Sometimes we will bring others' mistakes to their attention. But in those situations where I have done something wrong in error, then if somebody comes to correct me, I, I would like them to correct me with compassion, gentleness, kindness. Well, if that's the way I want to be corrected, then when I go to correct somebody else, I need to do it that way too. In 2 Timothy uh, chapter uh, 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 22, or excuse me, in verse 24, we read, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Paul told Timothy, if you're going to correct somebody, you do it in humility and do it with gentleness and patience. All of us, I'm sure, when we are corrected, like to be corrected in that fashion, then we should correct others in that fashion too. Galatians 6 verse 1 says, If a brother is overtaken in a fault, you that are spiritual, restore that one in a spirit of gentleness or meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. That's practicing the golden rule. What about uh, the way we judge others? You know, if I want to be judged based upon my own merits and not be a victim of stereotypes and prejudice, then I need to judge others that same way, on their own merits not stereotypically or prejudicially. So don't, don't go and label an entire race of people as being lazy, for example. Don't go and, and label an entire race of people as thieves. Don't label an entire race of people as being good with money or anything like that. We don't need, we don't need a bunch of Archie Bunkers uh, going around labeling people, uh, labeling entire races of people as one thing or another. You know what? They're lazy people in every race. They're thieves in every race. People need to be judged. Their lives need to be judged based upon their own merits. If the golden rule was practiced, then we wouldn't paint with so broad a brush because we don't like to be the recipients of, of stereotypes. We don't like to be the recipients of of prejudicial language. Well, if we don't want to receive it, then don't give it. Don't, don't treat others that way. Treat others the way you want to be treated. When God judges someone, it's based upon 
that individual's life. Each man shall give an account of himself unto God, Romans 14, verse 12. And our assessments of others should be done the same way. Judge not according to appearances, but judge righteous judgments. Jesus said in John 7, verse 24, what about forgiveness? Do I want other people to possess a forgiving attitude toward me? And when my imperfections become uh, visible, do I want people to, uh, to forgive me when I seek that forgiveness from them and to be merciful and compassionate? Well, sure I do. I want people to, 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 uh, to be forgiving of me. Well, then I need to be forgiving of other people. Jesus instructed us in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, by saying, if, if you forgive men their trespasses, then your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you either. Paraphrasing that passage. Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, verse 32, that we are to be uh, kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another even as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. So if I like it when and expect people to be forgiving toward me, then I need to be forgiving to them. It's a simple golden rule. You know, if this one principle, this one principle, the golden rule, if it were practiced, embraced, applied in our world, Think of all of the things that would be brought to an end. Practicing the golden rule would bring an end to gossip. Practicing the golden rule would bring an end to uh, revenge and for a, bring an end to a vengeful spirit. The golden rule, if practiced, would bring an end to racial prejudice. It would be a thing of the past. If the golden rule were practiced, there would be no more character assassinations. If the golden rule were practiced, there would be uh, no more screaming matches between husbands and wives or parents and children. If the golden rule were practiced, there would be no more abortions. If the golden rule were practiced, there would be no more theft. There would be no more murder. There would be no more adultery. Can you see how practical this principle is? We would bring an end to road rage. There would be an end to frivolous lawsuits. Just practice the golden rule. And our culture would be so much better. We would stop assigning false motives to others. Spousal and child abuse would come to an end. Lying would be no more. False doctrine would cease. A lot of the squabbles that we have among Christians would, would not exist if the golden rule were practiced. If we lived in a world that was dominated by the golden rule, you would see the works of the flesh, Galatians 5, 19 to 21, set aside, and the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, would replace them. If the golden rule were practiced, happiness and joy would be found in people's lives instead of anger and despair. If the golden rule were practiced, we could bring our troops home from battle because nations would be getting along with one another. If we lived in a world where the golden rule was practiced, then good mission works of the Lord's church would be fully funded. You see, if you are a Christian, Knowing what you know now, uh, wouldn't you want someone to bring the gospel to you if you didn't have it? Then we should want to bring the gospel to those who currently don't have it. If we lived in a world dominated by the golden rule, then in the church of the Lord, where you had duly appointed elders in the church as God wants there to be, Acts 14, uh, 23, and 1 Timothy 3 and Titus chapter 1, God's duly appointed and faithfully serving elders would be loved and supported and appreciated.